Manchester United have fallen again. This time against Roy Hodgson's Crystal Palace side at home in the Premier League. And the United Twins need to speak about it. United, United. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. My guy. We didn't do a, a Tuesday review on the Crystal Palace game just because I wanted to wait until we were at full strength again. PCs up and running so we can do United Twins videos as we usually do. But back to the game. Manchester United nil. Crystal Palace won. Where do we begin, Cappy? I mean, there were positives to look at on Tuesday's game. The fact that the squad picked for the Carabao Cup fixture were not just threatening in attack but took their chances, which is an element we went back to missing on Saturday. <laughs> Manchester United have scored seven goals in seven Premier League games. And that's only the beginning of our troubles in forward areas. Have to give a special shout out to Crystal Palace who Andrew. understood Andrew. the assignment, especially after their loss on Tuesday in the Carabao Cup. It was a completely different game and they were extremely resolute in their defensive strategies all game long especially after that superb strike from Joachim Anderson, who emphatically converted on a set piece. It then became a game of, can we break this team down? And ultimately, we all knew the outcome. If you've been watching Man United for a hot minute, you would have had it at the back of your head, even though we were all trying to stay optimistic, or at least most of us anyway. <laughs> no doubt after this season starts. There will be many questions asked of the manager, Eric Ten Hag. We, we're seeing it all over social media right now. And what we're also seeing are individuals being picked apart for their lack of consistency. Right or wrong, <laughs> let me know in the comments. And we can speak about which players are being rightly criticised, which players are particularly being harshly criticised. Who knows, maybe all of them deserve a bit of the blame. And that's kind of where I'm coming from because I think this is a team-wide issue. I wouldn't say this performance in particular was one of the worst I've seen. I wouldn't say it was one of the greatest I've seen either. But the oh. problems that I and, and we have been speaking about for what it feels like years now just continue to sprout at the most opportune of moments. How can you build a culture of consistency, determination and sheer focus when you're in the middle of an absolute circus? Clowns to the left. You've got some people juggling on the right and then the rest are just freestyling on the job. Literally. When I look into the distant future, I see nothing but circles of repetition for this club. Because at this point, it just seems scripted. Between media controversies, fan reaction and internal operations, it's really hard to find an ounce of positivity when it comes to this club. And don't you think that's saddening? Oh yeah. Sometimes I will come here after a good result and be happy. CM will come here after a good result and be happy. You guys will come here after a good result and be happy for a victory. But then reality sets in after a couple hours. And what can you do to, what, what have you got to fall back on? Maybe a, another piece of good news, another positive result. But then reality hits again, slaps you in the face. We need change at this club, man. And you all know what we're talking about at this point. It starts from the top. The worst start to a campaign in 34 years. Mm -mm. That can overall just sum up the poor selling and recruitment in the summer. The injuries and now the lack of on-pitch execution. I was speaking to my mum, shout out Marzito, during the game. And we got into a conversation about how disjointed we look in comparison to other teams. Not to say there isn't a clear plan, but a lot of the time when things don't go to plan, our default response mechanism kicks in. Avengers Assemble Type B. <laughs> Only for us, Hero Mode isn't the best option in a game where all 10 outfield, or you could say 11 with Andre or Nana, but 10 <laughs> outfield yeah. players need to be in sync with one another. That just isn't the, the case on a consistent basis. And that just produces bad looking football overall. One live from CT 
CTC News. Welcome to CTC News, where me, I, will be reporting the latest and greatest, maybe not so greatest news, in and around the ends about Manchester United. So let's get started. On Friday, the club revealed that Anthony will resume training at Carrington and be available for selection after being granted a leave of absence amid allegations of assault. Manchester United released a statement at 11am on Friday stating that the Brazilian has cooperated with police inquiries in both Brazil and the UK and he continues to do so. They also clarified that this decision will be kept under review pending further developments in the case. The link to the statement will be in the description. Lissandro Martinez is set for an extended period out due to a broken metatarsal injury that he will be getting surgery on at the start of this week. That could set back the Argentinian up to three months. Eric Ten Hag confirmed after the Palace game that Lissandro played when not 100% fit. And as their defensive options continue to dwindle, I'm sure some people will be questioning the decision for Martinez to play under those circumstances. Finally, on a more positive note, Manchester United's women's team kicked off their WSL campaign with a late comeback victory against Aston Villa at Villa Park. Goals from Lucia Garcia and substitute Rachel Williams completed the comeback against the 10 women of Villa who shocked Mark Skinner's squad by taking the lead through Rachel Daly, despite Scottish international Kirsty Hansen being shown a red card only two minutes prior. Their next match will be at home on Friday against last season's third place team, Arsenal, who lost their opening game against Liverpool at the Emirates. And that concludes this episode's CTC News segment. Let's start some conversations in the comments below. And until the next time, chase the chaos. CTC News. This 22's view segment is for you to voice your opinion, any opinion regarding Manchester United. So get in the comments, YouTube community tab, Twitter, Instagram, and let us know what you think for a chance to feature in these videos. Blessings to Super Nick, hey. a regular of this channel and mentioned earlier as well. She came in and said, as much as we want to direct our anger to specific players and the manager, is it time for us to look at the backroom staff setup and of course the over involvement of the senior management <sighs> team? And that is an interesting conversation to be had because of course you've got the backroom staff the ones that uh, Eric Ten Hag works with on a daily basis how do they impact training how do we train as a team because obviously mm. we only see the parts that the club wants to put out where everybody's smiling and, and having fun Indeed. how does this team actually train does it train to optimize the performances of each and every player or are they, are they just not responding well to that training and furthermore in a senior management team at board level for example i've been having these thoughts for quite a while now where it's like are they trying like are they dictating what goes on on the pitch because i look at the way manchester united have played football not just under Eric Ten Hag now but under numerous managers and it just seems like for whatever reason whether it's the players the manager there's a massive disconnect and a disregard to execute in the philosophies and the tactical setups that the managers are trying to implement. Now, there could be an array of reasons why that is the case. But once again, it's an interesting observation there from Supernick and an interesting conversation to be had. Yep. Get in the comments, tell her what you think and add to it as well. Lessons to Wendy Grant over on Twitter saying to me, it's simple. If the manager wants to play a certain style and he doesn't have the players to do that, then the manager needs to adjust and look at the strengths of his players and play to that. But Ten Hag is stubborn and will try to force it. 
Now, this is something we have heard a lot about Elek Ten Hag, his stubbornness and, and his willingness to, to stick to what he believes should or will work. Adaptation is everything. And as much as I do understand that a manager needs to be stubborn somewhat to, to be successful, especially if he's able to get the back in and everything works out, but at the same time, you need to adapt to your circumstances. Mm -hmm. So... Let us know what you think in the comments. Let Wendy know what you think in the comments as well. Do you think that Eric Ten Hag is a little too stubborn with his ways of thinking and, and how he wants to play football? Or do you think he's heading in the right direction but just needs a bit of time? Thank you, Mr. CTC, for that news report. And I would like to say us here at CM22EN. T, do not accept or condone any forms of indecent behaviour. No. Moving on, however, tomorrow for Man United's men's team is an opportunity to start rewriting some of the wrongs of Saturday, when we'll be facing Galatasaray in our Champions League match day two fixture. Have, and, and listen up, Cappy, listen uh, up. They right. have won three straight Super League games up in Turkey since their 2-2 draw with FC Copenhagen in match day one. For many, mm. bridges have been burned. We will hear the, the phrase papering over the cracks. We've heard it so much over the last decade. And in many situations, that has come to be the case. But no doubt about it, Eric Ten Hag and his squad will need to respond emphatically. Most. Give us some predictions for the Champions League game. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think the score is going to be? And also to discuss some of the news that CTC spoke about and myself and Cappy also. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, please be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed. If you reached the end, subscribe if you're new to the channel and share to your friends and frenemies. Until the next time, we'll see you lots in a bit.